Good evening, everybody, and welcome to the 2021 Middle Water Conference Scholar Athlete Banquet. Um, my name is Scott Newton. I'm the Athletic Director at Osceola. And just want to first, first and foremost say congratulations to all the great student athletes we have here tonight. Um, also to you as parents, friends, family, here to support um, our great student athletes. What an accomplishment for them to earn. Um, as we go about this tonight, the first thing we're going to start here is a little introductory. But also, not only do we have great kids in here, but it also, it's also to celebrate our conference. And as you look at this past year and the difficulties of it, our conference has still done very, very well during, throughout the state of Wisconsin. And bear with me here a little bit with some of these recognitions team-wise our conference has achieved during this past year so far. In the fall, we had a state championship team, Prescott Girls Golf, state champs. We had SEC girls who were, were golf state qualifiers. Osceola girls cross country team were state runner-ups. Osceola boys cross country team were state qualifiers. Elder football went nine and all this last year, and as good as a team I've ever seen, that without the state tournament, of course, we didn't have a chance to keep going, but definitely what they've shown, they're a team that definitely was a state caliber type team. Emory girls tennis state qualifier. That is just all from the fall. As we go into the winter time, we had state champions, Amory Wrestling, state champions division two, St. Croix Central Boys Basketball, state qualifiers. Somerset Hockey, Somerset Boys Hockey, state qualifiers. Again, as we go through all these accomplishments, it's amazing how our conference in Northwest Wisconsin has done throughout the state. Again, proving once again that I think we should be considered one of the top conferences in the state of Wisconsin, no matter what the enrollment level is. But most proud, I think, that we are as athletic directors is that this year that you guys know faced many challenges. And as a group, I tell you what, we sat in July, where we had all these meetings, trying to set up the, for the foundation for the fall, thinking about all these things. That it's crazy to think about what we, where we started. Um, to think that we started, excuse me, in the fall, but they go into basketball season for wrestlers to wear a mask during a wrestling match, for the basketball players and those guys, uh, individuals, boys and girls that go through the season wearing a mask for the games, it's a huge accomplishment for those kids and to you guys as family members to support the process. Um, a, a life lesson learned, especially for me, I can remember one time talking to our girls basketball team with a lot of our JV girls after the game, we were about maybe three weeks in the season. And I was like, hey guys, how's everything going for you? No, like, that's fine. They just kind of brush it off like they're used to it, they're moving on, they're, they're excited to play. And I think one thing to take from it is just the importance of what our education-based athletics can do, not only for the individual, but for, for us as fans and our communities um, in Northwest Wisconsin. So again, congratulations to all your great student athletes here at the Newport Conference. Um, good luck to all you guys here as you move ahead to, to your next challenges you have in life as well. Um, into our next phase, I'd like to introduce a veteran of the Middle Water Conference that's going to talk about the history of this banquet in Middle Water as well, Miss Renee Chapman. said I'm Renee, I retired uh, from Amory and I'm now working in the athletic department in Somerset. As a lot of my friends say, I suck at retirement. So, um, The WIA started the Scholar Athlete Program in 1984 and this is the 36th year of the program. It was organized to demonstrate the positive impact of interscholastic athletic activities and designed to recognize outstanding student athletes. The WIA usually selects 16 boys and 16 girls for the state award. However, due to COVID, they will not be giving the state award. And that may be 20, it might be 20. It's four from each division. In 2005, um, the Middle Order decided to develop a conference scholar athlete recognition for our athletes. I believe it was the brainchild of Wade Lebecki, who was the current deputy director of the WIA and was a Baldwin Woodville AD at the time. Myself, Arvid Mackey, you might recognize some of these names, of Osceola, Dave Morthrums of Prescott, Mark Stace of Ellsworth, John Ball of New Richmond, Brad Nemec of Somerset, and Randy Johnson of Durand, who was part of the middle border at that time. Now they went to the Dunn-St. Croix, and along came St. Croix Central. Uh, we would spend time discussing the selection process and how truly difficult it is to be selected at the state level. Even though we've had many middle border conference state recipients, we thought that it was important to recognize all local state nominees, which resulted in the creation of this event. 
This year marks the 16th year of the in-person Middle Border Conference Scholar Athlete Banquet. Uh, it would be the 17th year of the program. We did develop the programs last year, handed them off to the kids, but we could not meet in person. Uh, the 16 young men and women that we honor here tonight have earned 146 varsity letters in their high school careers, which is an incredible feat in itself. But also keep in mind that while being involved in most cases, uh, they were involved in three varsity sports, and most of them have grade points of 3.5 or above. As we begin our program, I'd like to recognize the following. Pete Vries is our conference commissioner. He's not here tonight. I'm not sure. He's uh, on vacation, I believe. Uh, athletic directors, uh, if you would just stand. Jeff Fern from Amory. Jason Sell from Baldwin Woodville. And Hooper from Ellsworth. Scott Farmer from New Richmond. Scott Newton, you've already met, from Osceola. Matt Smith from Prescott. Trent Probst from Somerset. And Brian Johnson from St. Clair Central. The parents and families of our athletes who are here to support them and are most likely the reason they are here tonight. And last but not least, the Middlebrook Conference would like to extend our sincere and heartfelt thanks to the St. Croix Central School District, Randall, who's running our lights tonight, who does a phenomenal job, for the use of this fabulous facility for tonight's program. We hope you enjoy the evening. And now I'd like to introduce Ann Hubert, who will introduce our guest speaker. Patrick's had a lot of 
accomplishments throughout his life, not nearly as much that he's listed on his bio here, but great person, great friend, and I am proud to um, introduce you to Patrick Larson. Off here. Well, thanks, Ann, for the, the introduction. Um, you know, before I get into the kind of prepared part, I, I was a little disappointed as a, as a wrestler who was, was not very good at, at trying to lose weight and always working through that battle. I was a little disappointed that we didn't have a, a, a dinner tonight because that was the, the highlight of from mine. I, I've uh, finished my wrestling career 25 years ago and haven't uh, stopped eating since so, after that last weigh in. But no, I. Um, uh, it, it's really great to be here. I, first of all, I want to just say congratulations to all the athletes. Um, you know, amazing to all the hard work that you put in, both academically and athletically. It's something that you can really be proud of, and, and you know, you'll tell these stories and have these accomplishments for the rest of your life. It's it's really truly really amazing. And and it start also with saying thank you to all the teachers, all the parents, all the coaches, and and different people that have been involved in your life. Um, I know. All the athletes here are, are very appreciative, but you just can't say thank you as much because when, when you start to look back on your life, you're going to see that, you know, there's really all these people that, you know, have taken their time to help you develop along the way. And, and that's really the only way you can be successful in life. You can't do it alone. You need to, to value those relationships and um, really say thank you. You don't say thank you enough sometimes. So um, really great to see everyone here today. Um, you know. I don't really have an overall theme to my to my, my words tonight. This is actually uh, one of the first times I've I've done something like this. But you know, just wanted to go through a couple thoughts that I had. You know, first of all, you know, cherish the memories that you had along the way here. Um, you know, as as you start to move on in your life, and you'll see that as you get older, high school is just just one chapter of your life. But it's it's an important chapter, and there's lots of great memories. I know. Just, I, I live in the Twin Cities now and, and work out of an office in Minneapolis. And just driving over here, I got excited. Um, you know, I, I think of our conference and, um, you know, St. Croix Central, uh, I won my first wrestling tournament here when I was in second grade, I still remember it. I think when I cleaned up my mom's house a couple years back, I still have a bracket from St. Croix Central, which was, which was fun. And, and Scott, I didn't know he was even going to be here today, but, you know, he asked me to not talk about Panther Pride too much here, but, um, you know, but when I think about memories, I think about the pride of representing your your school and your town and, and myself, I, I played football, I wrestled, I golfed. Uh, and you know, being an Elsworth wrestler, I was very proud of, of the tradition we have there. And and you know, I remember the first time I, I put on that jersey and went out and got announced. I mean it's just it's stuff that you're gonna remember for the rest of your life. And you know I, I like to joke about, uh, I told Anne, I said, well, great, Scott's here. I said, you know, I think a lot of people are probably familiar with the Ellsworth Wrestling Program. And, you know, I said, I was that class that lost the ball to Woodville in the middle when, like, Ellsworth won for many, many years in a row. And then these guys beat us for a couple years in a row. But uh, that, that was my class. So uh, I'll get onto that part of what I learned from that later in the speech. But, you know, it's uh, it's great, the rivalries and, and the, uh, you know, the, the just the relationships between everyone in this conference. And it, it'll be funny as you move on in life, wherever you end up, you'll start to, to build connections. I have a, a neighbor that you know is from the conference originally, and that so it's it's a small world. You'll be you'll be surprised at how many times you you run back into the people that you grew up with. Um, you know, next I want to talk about relationships. I touched on this a little bit, but just you know, as you go on in your life, you know, continue to focus on relationships. Um, if you think of all these people that supported you. Um, you know, you'll find whether it's professionally or personally that those relationships are just very important. And, you know, I know everyone in this room is, is a great teammate, a great person, and just, you know, you, you can never um, take for granted those relationships. You know, make sure you return the favor. The people that have helped you along the way, there's probably other people as you move on to college or work or what have you, um, there's always going to be people coming up that are looking to learn from your experiences. So just keep that in mind. I know. Um, I work at a big accounting firm, um, in, in, in that, one thing I love about working there, and I've been there for 20 years, is we hire, every year we hire like 50 people out of, out of university, and 
you know, so we always have new people coming in, and it's just great to see those people start their professional career. Um, we really get to play a, a teacher to them and help them learn as they, you know, start their professional career and, and move their way up. And I know some of my fondest memories have been seeing, um, you know, there's a, a woman that I recruited out of North Dakota that, you know, I, I interviewed her on campus. She worked for us, and, and five years later, she's presenting to senior management in a business situation. And it's just fun to see those people grow up underneath you and learn and, and really be successful. So um, focus on the relationships. Um, you know, the other thing, I, I do a lot of recruiting, and people always ask me, they say, well, what are you looking for in an employee? Um, you know, and, and I always try to really simplify it. And I say, you know, I'm looking for three things. And, you know, these are pretty obvious things, but I, I think they're always good to reinforce is, you know, first of all, I think it's work ethic. And that doesn't change no matter if you're playing sports, school, um, you know, in, in anything that you're doing. You always have to have a strong work ethic. You have to be able to put in the time that's necessary when it's important. And I think you all learn that um, through your careers today. Um, you know, you need to have the right skills. So uh, whether it's academically, doing well in school, professionally, learning whatever trade you end up doing, if you're a doctor or a fireman or a police officer, you know, focus on, on being skilled, it's important. Um, whatever you do, you want to be good at it, just like if you're, you know, playing a sport, and, and that, that doesn't really change. I mean, all throughout your life, you, you need to focus on, on being good at what you do, and it'll, it'll help you be successful. And then lastly, it's, it's kind of a simple thing, but just focus on people and communication. You know, as I see through my professional career, it still comes down to, you know, what your mom told you in, in grade school, can you play nice with people? And even if you're in a difficult situation, um, and, and I have times at work where you've got to deliver a difficult message, you know, can you do it with empathy, and can you do it in a way that, um, you know, the person wants to work with you, wants to, you know, whether it's a customer or if it's a coworker, you know, just focus on relationships and communication, and that'll go a long way, because what I see, you know, people, uh, Again, back to this recruiting situation, people ask me, like, well, who are the people that are most successful at your firm? And it's it's the people that can come in, be a team member, and, and work hard, and really get along with people. And those people, you know, just are incredibly successful throughout their life. Um, you know, the, the, last, or the next thing I want to talk about was, you know, you continue the passion that you guys have shown through your career so far. Um, in, in terms of your passion for your sports and for your academics, I think that's very important. Um, I know, again, back to kind of a recruiting situation, but I look at people, I said, I, I, you know, a lot of people ask me, like, what type of experiences are you looking at? And I, I said, I don't care what people did, but I just want them to be passionate about something. I don't, you know, if it's playing the piano or if it's, um, you know, playing hockey or if it's, um, running marathons or whatever, show that you, you care about something, you've, you've worked hard at that, and you know you focus your, your, your efforts on that. Because I feel like that passion, you know, later when you're down the road, whatever you do, is transferable to whatever, you know, to whatever vocation you end up taking, and you'll be successful if you can show that same passion in your professional life, your personal relationships, et cetera. So, you know, just keep that passion and, and show that when you're when you're interacting with people. Um, the next thing you know, that I think that I, I learned from athletics was, you know, it, it, it's also a good lesson in learning how to, to win and lose. And that's that's going to continue on. Um, it's, it's funny, when I looked at the schools up there, I can still remember where I wrestled my last wrestling match. I didn't make it to state my senior year. That was a goal that I had. Um, wrestled my last match up in Ambry at sectionals and, and got beat by a guy. And I, I remember I thought my world was kind of crushed at that point. Oh my gosh, all this time that I spent. And, and I, didn't, I didn't achieve my goal. But you're going to find out during life, life is, you know, there's, there's so many good things about life, but you're going to have bumps along the road. And learning how to deal with those, you know, be a good sport, uh, learn from them, and, and try to get better down the road, that, that is just so important. And I think the other thing you're going to find is all the all the people being recognized tonight, you, you've done very well at your level, and you're going to move on to the next level. And it's going to be harder. It's going to be just as competitive. You're going to be, you know, in whatever you do, you're going to be with other people that are just as good as you are. And you're going to find, I mean, that, that was one of the big things I learned when I, when I went to college and I started working at, a, at, a, at the company I work at is that, you know, you feel like you've accomplished so much, but 
you know, there's still a lot of people out there that have accomplished a lot. You should still be proud of what everything you accomplish, but it, it gives you a little bit of modesty as well, and and uh, you're not always gonna gonna be number one. And you, you, you learn to deal with that. You learn to, that pushes you to get better as a person and 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 do different things. So um, you know, keep that passion and but, but be modest in, in your successes and failures because they'll, they'll come and, and life goes on. You learn from them, and it, it also puts things in perspective as you get older and have families and, and such to where um, you don't you don't worry so much about losing that last wrestling match anymore. You just remember the, the memories of, of everything along the way. So um, and anyway, today or earlier today I was talking to one of my one of my uh, coworkers and they said I had to work some type of you know, some type of quote into the speech. So I have a Vince Lombardi, which I thought was fitting since we're back in Wisconsin here, but you know, he, as he said, it's not whether you get knocked down, but it's how many times you get back up. So just keep that in mind. Um, you will all be very successful in whatever you do, and, and just keep that, that, uh, that throughout your life. Um, the, the last thing is just uh, the same way that you did in, in, in high school. Make sure you enjoy whatever you're doing, uh, whether that be going on to college or entering the workforce, uh, because life goes fast. And it, um, I, um, again, I, I recruit college students and I, I have students sometimes that are, they're so eager to graduate and get an internship and start working and everything. And I, I've had some where I just told them the other day, I said, you can just slow down. You know, high school's a great time, college is a good time, when you're young is a good time, when you're old it's a good time, but like, life goes very fast. So. Don't be, I feel like a lot of the people in this room are very driven and, and focused on success and doing the next thing, but don't be afraid to, you know, stop and enjoy the, the stage of life that you're in now because it, um, looking back, I, I still feel like I, I remember when I graduated from high school and it's been 25 years now, I'm just about, and uh, just just make sure you enjoy the, the path along the way because as I'm sure a lot of the parents and stuff here, it, it goes fast and you, some of those memories you can't, can't recreate. So don't be don't be so focused on doing well that uh, you, you miss out on the, on the current times. So um, just wanted to say at the end here again, uh, congratulations to everyone. Um, you should be proud of, of what you've accomplished and, and be proud of where you grew up in this conference. And it's it's great that everyone here is recognizing you tonight. I'm sure you all go on to do really great things, and I look forward to uh, reading about you online or in the paper and, and whatever you do in your next. Endeavor. So, congrats. And now we'll begin the student athlete portion of tonight's banquet. Um, hello, I'm Matt Smith, the Activities Director at, at Prescott High School, and I'm honored to be recognizing Prescott's two scholar athletes. Our female representative, Isabella Lenz, um, she's not able to be here tonight. She's on a family trip in Arizona, lucky her. Um, but I did want to say some words to, to honor her accomplishments in, in her career at Prescott High School. Um, Isabella is one of the most decorated student athletes in the history of Prescott High School. A tremendous competitor and outstanding student who was always putting in the extra time in all that she did. Whether it was band, acting as our student council president, two-time middle border conference player of the year, and then two-time all-state in basketball as our school's all-time leading scorer. You name it and Isabella was excelling in it. She's always willing to lend a hand to any friend, any student that she knows, or any classmate, teammate, you name them across the board. She's always continually, continuously looking to improve others and make anyone better is the way, any way that she could. Isabella's going to head to Michigan Tech to play basketball on a scholarship next year. Let's give Isabella a round of applause, please. <laughs> Our male representative is Austin Fox. Um, Austin, why don't you come up here? A few words to say about Foxy as we call him around the halls of Prescott. Um, Austin's the type of person that you'd absolutely love to be around. He is successful in all that he does because of his work ethic and positive attitude and everything. Austin has been a multi-year captain in football, and that's a nod to his outstanding leadership qualities that he possesses. He's always looking to make a positive impact on all that he encounters. He was an all-conference player in both basketball and football, and he is also an inaugural 1,000-pound member in our weight room club. 
with the impressive numbers that he puts up, throwing the iron around in his fresh white Chuck Taylors. Thought you might wear those tonight, but those are nice too. Um, one thing about Foxy, he's an extremely humble person and a very hungry person. He's always looking to get better any way that he can, and he's willing to put in the extra work. He plans to attend UWRF next year and play football for the Falcons. Congratulations and best of luck, Austin. luxury here of being the first presenter, and uh, I'd say the first, uh, the greatest lesson I've learned while playing the Middlemore Conference is just the resiliency it takes day in and day out. Uh, all the competition from teams, I play both baseball and football, I've never really felt the position where I'm just comfortable, I'm just relaxed going into a game, I'm always on my toes and I think that's a good thing. I don't really want to be relaxed going into a game, and so I really uh, love playing the Middlemore Conference for that, it is a competition that I just live for. And uh, just uh, keep working uh, myself and with my teammates. And with that, one of the teammates I've really cherished and role models, which is uh, different from uh, different from the pamphlet because I got so many role models. Uh, so I'll present about Wesley Barch. He was a senior my freshman year, and uh, he kind of gave me the lumps and bruises I got uh, learning how to uh, adapt to high school life. I was a bag holder my freshman year. Uh, <laughs> When I was an offensive lineman, I was about 5'11", 230 pounds, and uh, I'd have to hold the bag for Wesley Barch, who was an all-conference offensive and defensive lineman. And yeah, he, uh, he knocked me down a couple times, but he'd always help me back up. Uh, he was just a great person to be around. And uh, going to the other end of my high school career is uh, my other role model, who I have to present tonight, uh, Coach Jordan Hansen, who's actually here today. And uh, I really admire him because he came in really late in the summer when we were out of a coach. And uh, he came in and really bonded with all the players. And uh, even though he did start so late, he had a child during the time. He had a quarantine before the season uh, started. So that was really hard to create a good bond and development with the players. But he's able to do that. And he'd always be in in the morning before, uh, before school, 6 a.m. to lift. He'd stay after practice till 7 p.m. And I really appreciate all his hard work that he's done for the program. And, um, program will be in great hands as long as he's the head coach. Thank you. Go Cardinals. Next hailing from Osceola, we have Scott Douglas Newton. First will be our BMO recipient, Lauren Ellison. Please come up here, Lauren. I'm going to wait till Lauren gets up here because there's nothing more I, I enjoy doing than embarrassing her during the school day. Um, I'm probably the last person she wants to be up here with, to be honest with you. Many times that I walk around the lunchroom and she hides as I get close to her because I'm just afraid I want to talk to her. Um, but as we go about this, been in Osceola for 18 years. I don't know if we have a more humble, more hardworking student athlete than we have in this, this young individual to the right of me. Um, constantly working, constantly focused on being better, being a great teammate, doing all that she can to make not only herself better, her teammates better, our school better. Um, as I sit up here, I always try to think of stories because I have a great opportunity to work with a lot of our kids in the weight room as well. And this is probably two years ago, I could be wrong, but two years ago, this is not in the weight room. I'm sitting in the gym, and I'm sitting there talking in the doorway. Excuse me, I'm going to get away. And I'm coming out, she's got shoes like this on. And also, I look down there, I'm like, what the heck? She doesn't have any goddamn toenails. I'm like, like, what are you doing? She goes, well, it's from running. So every day in the summertime, she goes out and runs. What her time in the morning? Probably 6 a.m. by a guess. She over, I say overran, but she ran so much that she ran out of her goddamn toenails. And that's kind of the athlete you have here, and determination and person you have here as well. The other thing is, we always work on right away in the morning. Good morning, Lauren. Thank you. I have a complete sentence from the morning house. I take that and we run. All right? So, I'm going to miss her. Have her in zero hour. She works her butt off every morning. Okay? Now we're attracting this a little different, right? But she works her butt off leading the way. Um, going to miss her attitude. Going to miss her, her effort. Going to miss, miss her presence in Osceola High School. I'd like to recognize Lauren Elfson.
So there are a lot of important lessons that I've learned from athletics and academics, most notably sportsmanship, dedication, and teamwork. But the greatest lesson I've learned is simply to love what you do. From the late nights spent preparing for an exam to the post-race celebrations and everything in between, I learned to love it all, every single aspect, the good and the bad. Failure produced the opportunity to improve, and just as such, improvement gave me the confidence to persevere. Each experience has been equally important to the journey, and in the end, it mattered not the accomplishments and awards I received, but rather my love for the time I spent and the memories I made. That being said, my biggest role model in life has always and will always be my mother. Not only is she a caring parent, but a fierce coach and an absolutely brilliant teacher. She manages it all effortlessly, but behind the scenes, I see the hours upon hours of work she pours into her athletes and students ensuring each has the op equal opportunity to succeed. She's more than an educator and a coach. She's passionate, selfless, motivated, dedicated, empathetic, and everything you could ever ask for. She's a true inspiration. Every day she challenges me to reach my potential and has endless support for me in all that I do. She's the strongest woman I've ever known, and I can only hope to be half the woman she is. Thank you, Mom, for everything you do. Um, I'm going to follow this up with um, my teammates. I've also been blessed with some of the most powerful and independent young women as teammates. It's rare to meet a group of girls so talented and driven, and I'm not just talking about sports. We have advocates, influencers, believers, and change makers. Women who are bold, who don't take no for an answer, and never shy away from a challenge. They inspire me every day and have truly shaped my life for the better. As I move forward, I hope to embody their bravery and confidence knowing that with it, there is no mountain I cannot climb. It has been my greatest honor to tilt the line with such an empowering group of ladies, and I am forever grateful for the impact they have made in my life. Thank you. Thank you, Lauren. Our male recipient in Osceola goes to Jacob Hall. Neither one of them are, are probably the model talkers, if I talk to them very well. I'm sure they are in their own private setting. Um, but Jacob here, I, I didn't have the opportunity to coach Jacob in high school, but I did have the great pleasure of coaching Jacob in our fifth and sixth grade baseball travel season, right? Um, which seems like a long time ago. Now, Jacob, you talk about doing a dual sport athlete or not, he could be that person. He could be a kid that does multiple things and does multiple, multiple things well. Okay? That year, he's a sixth grader. Yeah, I'm coaching fifth sixth grade baseball. I can't see Jacob's batting either one or two, and he's playing center field. All right? We probably, I, I'm going to guess we played around 20, 20 games that year. In 20 games, finally, I'm going to constantly, automatically, in the chart, Jacob batting two, center field, two, center field, one, center field. Finally, by the 17, 18 game, this, this always sticks out to me. Because really, you have a lot of kids sometimes who go, oh, you guys coach you sports. Um, basically, you have kids always come to you, hey, can I play here? Can I go here? Can I bat here instead? And you're like, always kind of working it out a little bit for what's best for the team. And, and finally, Jacob kind of came to me one, one game, and I think it was practice. And he's like, hey, coach, can I play something other than center field, please? And at that moment, you know, you, you feel about this big, and like, uh, I did mean to just constantly put you down on my spot. I appreciate he advocated for himself. I think I put him in second base for one inning. You're back in center field, to me, and got a good center fielder, right? That's what happens. <laughs> but that's the type of kid he is. He, he'll do anything that he, that's asking for his teammates. He's never about himself. And I think if you watched them this last year, like cross country team, on our boys basketball team, now as he's heading into golf season, which I'm sure he's gonna be a heck of a leader for our golf team, he's a heck of a golfer. Everything is about the team. And nothing you can if you can't ask for anything more than from as a coach, as a fan, as a parent, as an Osceola representative here at representing our kids in our community. So I'd like to recognize Jacob Hall. Alright, so the most important thing I've learned throughout high school is that you really have to put in the work if you want to succeed. I didn't always want to go to summer cross-country practice at 7 a.m. or maybe spend multiple hours at the golf course each day when it was 100 degrees or even to get shots up for basketball. But I've learned that practicing outside of sports is imperative if you want to be any good. 
With my stature, you would never think I was one of the better athletes in my school, but because I put in the work to accomplish some of my goals, it never affected me once. Uh, the two biggest role models in my life through high school were definitely my parents. Uh, my dad was always the one teaching me how to shoot, rebounding for me, talking to me after my games, and he coached me in all the sports I ever participated in. Uh, my mom is my biggest supporter. She is always at every game. She took me to and from practices, and she always had positive things to say, even after my worst games. I've always looked up to my parents more than anyone, and I can't thank them enough for all that they do for me. Thank you. Next up, from Baldwin Woodville, Jason, the Ox Cell. Now that's a compliment. He's a big fella, he's a strong fella, too. Yeah. Our uh, first scholar athlete for uh, tonight is Juno Paulson. Juno, would you come on down, please? And then Sam, if you want to just join her here on the side, that'd be great. All right, with that, Juno, uh, first of all, I want to thank parents Ed and Rebecca for raising such a fine young woman. Uh, Juno is a very hard worker in the classroom, on the tennis court, soccer fields, and the hockey arena. She can be a very quiet and shy at times. I don't know if we'll see what speech has here. But uh, is a very caring and, and helpful person. Uh, she had a 3.9 GPA. Uh, she was honorable mention all state and, and, and uh, all conference for girls hockey. And this is a, a culmination of a, a lot of great things happening for her at Baldwin Woodville High School. She plans to in the future attend the University of Wyoming. It'll be interesting. In the last four years of three sports and doing well in academics, I've learned how to control my fear. Before a big game or match, or even the speech in front of my classmates, I had to be able to not shake and not let my fear of failure get the best of me. I love to play sports, but I get too much in my head and then I don't get to show my true potential. But even now, standing in front of all of you, I had to swallow my fear and come up here. Two people who were able to help me go from a shy and quiet freshman into the person you see today were John Zevenbergen and Jen Schoen. John has been a coach of mine since I was nine, and he has been like a second father to me for the last four years. I became not only a better hockey player, but a stronger and more confident person because of him pushing me to be better and helping to learn it for myself. Mrs. Schomer, otherwise known as Sarah, has been a teacher of mine since sophomore year. After I took my first AP exam, I went to her room for lunch and cried. She gave me some granola and talked with me until the rest of the class came back from lunch. I still think about that day anytime I feel overwhelmed. Even now, she's been able to keep me sane this year through every problem that's come up through sports, classes, or just the thought of having to grow up already. I also would like to recognize my parents from driving me a half an hour to hockey on a Monday night at 9 o'clock, or spending countless weekends out of town at tournaments, and even to me, even talk, taking me all the way to nationals three times. I have made everything I've wanted to do a reality, and I am incredibly thankful for all the people around me who have helped me with every endeavor I've ever taken on and every obstacle I've overcome. Next, I have the pleasure of introducing Sam Crowley. Uh, Sam, I want to thank uh, parents Pat and Tracy Crowley. Sam is a very hard worker in the classroom, football field, baseball field, and on the wrestling mat. Sam's uh, ability to do whatever is asked of him is phenomenal. In football, that meant playing different positions from year to year on offense, on defense, and on special teams. Whatever he could do to help the team, Sam did. He was an all-conference uh, player in football, Baseball and wrestling. I uh, was able to take fifth place to stay wrestling this year. Uh, with Sam, he's undecided as of what he wants to do for now, but maybe he'll be an EMT or a paramedic, uh, saving somebody's life someday. Sam is a young man that I would like to keep around for another four years. Unfortunately, we cannot. Sam Crowley. Ariana Huffington once said, 
Failure is not the opposite of success, it's part of success. This is possibly the biggest lesson I have learned through school and sports. As athletes, we spend time upon time, and we fail time upon time, and we have to remind ourselves that success doesn't come easy. We spend many hours in the weight room and on the practice field in order to achieve our goals, as well as a countless number of hours we spend in the classroom trying to get good grades. But throughout my academic and athletic career, there have always been people I have turned towards for help. My two biggest role models growing up were my parents. My parents have always pushed me to strive for my best, both athletically and academically. From my dad throwing the ball with me in the yard, to my mom nagging me about schoolwork, I was pushed every day to be the best I could be because my parents always saw great potential in me. Although I many times thought my parents were being hard on me, I know it was all out of love, and I cannot thank them enough for everything they've done. Next up, we have the host, Brian Johnson from St. Grace Central. Uh, first, I, I just want to thank you all for being here. Um, I, got a, I got a picture from a, a group text the other day. It was a student in Rochester, and it was her first day of high school. Um, she was a ninth grader, and her first day in the high school was, was April, April 3rd. Um, I think about what all of our schools have been doing. I think about the sports seasons we've had. I think about the work that the kids have done and the teachers have done um, to have these opportunities, and I just think it's a, a blessing we get to be here today. Um, I'm incredibly humbled to be in front of you all. Uh, the other ADs are much better public speakers than me. Um, the young lady from Osceola, um, I could have cried a little bit. Uh, that was very, very nice what you said. So I'll do my best, Gabe and Maya, um, to, uh, to honor you and, uh, and all the hard work that you've done. Um, I'd like Gabe Siler and Maya Kaiser to please come to the stage. I'm going, to read you a, I'm going to read you a few stats um, about these two outstanding and incredible individuals. Um, but before I do that, I want you to tell you that this is my first year at St. Croix Central. Um, I graduated from here in 1999. I would not have been the uh, scholar athlete, neither in the academic <laughs> portion or the athletic portion. <laughs> uh, I, yeah, I, I played a couple sports. Um, but when I walked in on, on my first few days, you start to notice kids. Um, you start to notice how students carry themselves. You notice how they interact with others. You notice how they interact with adults. Um, I can tell you that these two students are, are the absolute supreme leaders um, in our building. They do positivity and class. When you want to see a kid doing something right, you can look to Maya and Gabe. Um, so aside from their academic um, and athletic accomplishments, which we're here to honor tonight, they are good, good people. Um, start with Maya. Maya Kaiser is an eight-time letter winner. Um, she's been a four-time first-team all-conference in cross-country and also a four-time state qualifier. Uh, she was a three-time all-conference member in track and a one-time state qualifier. Four times she's been academic all-state in cross-country and two times um, athletic all-state. She's also been a member of BAN, National Honor Society, our Pathfinder Group, and FCA. Maya will be running at the University of Akron next fall. Thank you for the Female Athlete, Maya Kaiser. The biggest lesson that I've learned from athletics and academics during high school is to build from setbacks and use them as fuel to learn and grow. With running, and really any sport, comes disappointment and difficulty. How you choose to react with those setbacks is what sets you apart as a champion and creates a path for success. Choosing, a, choosing to look at a setback as a challenge that is building character and lessons you can use in academics and even life outside of athletics is the biggest thing ever. And then my biggest two role models, um, so the first one is Alicia Munson, who is a now pro runner originally from England. 
And I remember looking up to her and watching her race when I was in middle school, and she would be about two minutes ahead of everyone else, and I would think I have to be just like her. And then I also look up to her because she comes from a small town, so it's easy to relate to her. My other role models are my parents because they're the main reason that I get to run and my biggest supporters. They have driven me to countless races around the state and surrounding states and given me opportunities to train in amazing place, places like Colorado. They really are my biggest fans and I'm grateful for them. Thank you. Our male athlete is Gabe Seiler. Um, Gabe's a 10-time letter winner, uh, sixth time he's been all-conference, two-time first team as a running back, two-time as a defensive back, and two-time uh, a member of the all-conference basketball team. This year he was both the football and basketball middle border conference player of the year. He was an all-region running back, he was first team all-state from the Coaches Association of Basketball, and he was an AP all-state honorable mention in basketball. He ranks first in his class with a GPA of 4.0. Uh, he's participated in a band, SOS, and National Honor Society. Uh, next, he'll be going to, the, to Bethel University uh, and playing basketball. Male scholar athlete, SEC Gabe Simon. Alrighty. Uh, I believe that high school athletics play an integral role in growing student athletes around the country. Uh, I feel the greatest lessons that I've learned are as follows. Everything happens for a reason. Patience and persistence will lead you to your goals, and a team is much stronger than a group of individuals. Some of the greatest lessons that I've learned in high school sports were learned both before and after games when I talked to the people that I looked up to most. My two role models that I've looked up to during my high school uh, career were my dad, Ron, and my grandpa, Dave. Watching them live their lives and hearing their stories has helped teach me how to be successful in life and live life with a purpose. I cannot thank them, along with the rest of my family, enough for what they've done for me. Thank you. Next up is Scott Farmer in Richmond. I'd like to start off by congratulating all the Scholar athletes here tonight. Um, what you've done in the last year, year and a half, nobody else has ever had to do. So congratulations to all of you, and hopefully nobody ever has. Yeah. Um, so could I have Ian Young and Tyler Dennis? Not up front. Well, this is my first year in New Richmond and my first year in the area, so being new to the New Richmond area, I did not get the honor to watch these two grow up through the ranks, play the athletics, watch their scholars uh, build themselves up as great adults, human beings. Um, so what I ended up doing is after I got all the information together, I looked around, went and talked to all the coaches that they've had over the years, went and talked to all the teachers they've had over the years. Um, some of the words that I heard to describe both of them were character, integrity, teammate, discipline. Um, nobody had anything bad to say about either one of these two, which that, which that in itself tells you why they're two winners for this award. A um, couple of the individual things that they've had um, at the school, um, Leah is a 10-time letter winner. Um, and three, all, three sports every year with volleyball, basketball, and softball. Uh, she's a five-time all-conference award winner. And everybody, all her teammates that I've talked to says she has a great, great teammate. She's always there. Her coaches say she works hard. She'll do whatever, she, whatever you ask. She'll play any position that, that uh, you will ask her to as well. 
So congratulations to you. Yeah. Some of the greatest lessons that I've learned from sports are how to be a good teammate, what it means to be a good teammate, and how to be a leader. It is also important to learn how to be adaptable in any situation, and I feel like I learned that throughout this year. One of my role models is Jeff Beal, my volleyball coach. He is a role model to me because he, is always, he always challenges me to be better if it's in the classroom or out on the court. He pushes me to accomplish my goals, and when I accomplish them, he helps me strive for bigger goals. Coach Theo is always someone I can count on and trust no matter the situation. Another one of my role models is my grandma Carol Dion. Although she isn't a school teacher nor one of my coaches, she, she has shown me how it is important to have an education and if you put your mind to something, you can always accomplish it. I strive to be like her. She is caring, compassionate, driven, and hardworking. She has accomplished many great things in her life using these key qualities. I chose both of these people because I want to carry the same traits that they have and hopefully have an impact on others like they had on me. Next for Tyler Dennis, uh, four to, uh, three sport athlete all four years, bigger in wrestling. Uh, one thing he always tried to do in the fall, apparently, was try to find that sport that got him ready for wrestling. Uh, went out, did football his first two, did cross country, finished with tennis, and then moved on into his wrestling career. Also did tennis in the spring. He's a conference champ in wrestling, four lettered all four years. Uh, he also lettered three years for tennis, and he was a wrestling tennis captain, academic all-state in wrestling, He's also number one in his class with a 4.0 GPA. All right, competing in sports for me has taught me hard work, dedication, sacrifice, and humility. Most importantly, though, I think sports have taught me the value of a team because nothing that I've accomplished has been alone. My coaches, my parents, my teammates have all helped me to become who I am today. They've all been indispensable to me along my journey providing endless support, inspiration, and pushing me every day to be the best I can be. I especially want to thank my dad and mom for believing in me, more than ever believed in myself. My sister Annalie for supporting me all the time, and attending every competition I've been part of. My brother Brandon, I especially want to thank for being an incredible idol, and always making me better in practice. All of my coaches, Coach Swanson, Stop Moore Lee, Coach Zink in wrestling, Coach Devro, and many more that are too much to name, have all played a huge role in helping me get to where I am today. I couldn't be more grateful for the impact on my life. Thank you. Next is Jeff Fern from Amon. Thanks, Scott. <clears throat> All right, Drew and Mikey, come on down. Uh, and, and Brian, by the way, I'm also a uh, St. Clair Central graduate, and I wasn't even allowed on campus when they held this event that night. So <laughs> you and I have something in common. All right, we got the Avery train up here. I'm going to start with Drew Granica. Drew is the daughter of Carl and Heather Granica. Drew is an accomplished three-sport athlete who has lettered in volleyball, basketball, and softball. Drew is a model student who has excelled in the classroom with a GPA of 3.94. Having her father as an assistant coach and a sister who is also a scholar athlete has pushed Drew to be the best she can be. Drew leads by example and can be found putting in the necessary work in the off season, specifically in the weight room. Next year, Drew will be attending a four-year college and will be majoring in engineering. Congratulations, Drew Granica. Throughout my years of academics, I have learned what it means to have a good work ethic. I have developed the skills necessary to manage my time, problem solve, and be responsible. Being a good student has brought me opportunities I otherwise wouldn't have had. 
My athletic career has taught me what it means to be a selfless person and how to serve others. Being a teammate comes with the task of holding yourself accountable every day. Learning how to work hard, be a leader, and have a positive attitude through athletics has built the person that I am today. Everything that I've experienced and learned throughout the years will definitely help me in the future. Someone who has guided me through school and athletics is my dad. He has shown me what it means to work hard without complaining. Passion is something that comes easily to my dad, which he has passed on to me. Another person that has influenced me is my older sister. She paved the way for me in academics and athletics. She taught me how to be a leader and is an example of how hard work pays off. I am thankful for all of the people in my life who have had a part in my success. Thank you. Thank you, Drew. All right, up next, Mikey Kershinsky. Mikey is the son of Tiffany and Brad Heyer. Mikey is a well-rounded three-sport athlete who is lettered in football, basketball, and baseball. Mikey has challenged himself ins inside the classroom uh, and has earned a GPA of 3.72. Mikey is known as a gamer when he gets between the lines and is a true competitor. Mr. Kershinsky is a very likable young man who is well respected by his peers in the hallways. Mikey plans to attend the University of Wisconsin River Falls and will major in exercise and sports science. Congratulations, Mikey Kershinsky. I am very humbled to be very humbled to be selected as a 2021 scholar athlete. And there are many people that I need to thank who made it possible for me to be here tonight. Above everyone and at everything, my mom deserves the biggest thank you. She is a woman who has worked so hard to see me succeed in life despite any of the obstacles that she has faced. And no words are enough to let her know how thankful I am. My parents have been my biggest supporters and have driven me to be the athlete and student that I am today. And for that, I am very grateful. Secondly, a huge thank you to all the coaches and teachers who have dedicated many hours of their lives to bettering me and my teammates. As a young athlete throughout middle school, John Otto instilled the competitive spirit and passion for athletics in me. This past year, John sadly lost his battle against ALS. I dedicate this award to him and hope that as he watches over myself and all the other athletes, he is impacted. He knows that his spirits will continue to live on forever. As one of my favorite NFL players, Paul Macklin, said, you've got to ride the wave of the season and ride the wave of life. If this past year has taught me anything, it has been to go with the flow while still not taking a moment on the field or court for granted. Thank you once again to all the coaches, teachers, and mentors in my life who have made success a possibility. All right, congratulations, Mikey, representing the Purple Panthers from Ellsworth, the Ann Hubert. Never settle. 
During my basketball team's pregame warm-ups, we would never end on a missed shot. It may seem like just a silly superstition, but it applies to more than just a game. It tells me to never settle for anything less than what I have worked for. I will bring this with me to all of my future endeavors, such as my college courses and career goals. My first role models are my parents. My parents have been my biggest fans all throughout my life, supporting me through every high and every low. I witness their hard work and determination daily, and they are always willing to help others with a smile on their faces. I would not be where I am today without them. My second role model is my grandpa. My grandpa was a fighter pilot in the Navy for 10 years. After serving, he went to law school and subsequently became a partner at a law firm. He is one of the most inspiring and remarkable people that I have ever known. What he has accomplished in his life is truly amazing to me, and he has become my favorite storyteller. Thank you. All right, Mason Anderson. Uh, Mason, in my opinion, has always been a little bit of a quiet athlete, um, but he really excelled his senior year. You could really tell a difference um, in his leadership and his work ethic and just an amazing transformation of being a senior a senior leader. And I believe I told you this, Nathan, but uh, got a really nice compliment from one of our athletic directors here tonight at when Mason was playing a basketball game at an opposing school, where this athletic director actually reached out to me and, and commented on how great of a team leader and floor leader that Mason was, and you can tell that he carried the team and he was encouraging the teammates and just how he worked through the situation of the game. And this was in so many ways how Mason operated this year, um, especially, and he's gotten many awards, like everyone else here tonight, but some really outstanding accomplishments this year. And um, Great kid, great person in the hallway, someone that always has a smile, and again, someone that everybody wants to have as a teammate. So, let's see. Uh, first off, I'd like to thank all the athletic directors here that worked so hard to give us sports seasons this year. I know my fellow award winners, all our teammates, and myself are extremely grateful. Thank you. That's where the greatest lessons I have learned from my academic and sports career are as follows. Nothing in life has taught me hard work, patience, and humility more than sports and academics. Everyone here understands that working hard in both sports and academics is a must, or you would not be here tonight. For me, sports has taught me patience. Success does not come right away. Sometimes you must wait for your time. As for humility, nothing has humbled me more than sports and academics. Sometimes you feel as if you have worked hard as you can, and you have been patient, but sometimes it's just not enough. And you, have, you must be content knowing you have given it your all. Two most influ influential role models in my life have been my offense coordinator, Jason Janke, and my father. Coach Janke has been one of the great, biggest supporters and difference makers in sports for me. He has constantly been there for me to ask questions or just give me the motivation and guidance I needed in any scenario. The most influential person in my life is my father. He has always been my biggest supporter. I am forever grateful for his constant support and guidance throughout life. Thank you, Dad. Lastly, I'd like to say congratulations to all the 2021 Middle Border Conference Scholar Athletes, and good luck in all your future endeavors. and he does have a brother here tonight, Mylon, who was also a scholar athlete. So Mason said he had it all under control because he knew exactly how tonight was going to go because he's been here before. So thanks for that, Mylon. <laughs> all right, next school, last school up is Somerset and Mr. Crow. Good evening, everyone. I'd like to welcome our scholar athletes up to the stage at this time, Taylor Paulson and Jack Gassick. And as they make their way up here, this is my sixth year in the area and third year as the athletic director at Somerset. And as Mr. Newton pointed out earlier, just some of the team and individual accolades that took place just this year continue to impress me on a year-to-year -year basis. This is without a doubt one of the strongest conferences in the state of Wisconsin, in my opinion. 
Congratulations to everybody that's in the room to receive their, their awards tonight. I'll start with Taylor Paulson, who's our Female Scholar Athlete recipient this year. Taylor has participated in volleyball, basketball, and soccer during her time at Somerset. To this point, she's earned nine varsity letters. She's earned all-conference recognition two times in basketball and one time in soccer as a sophomore. Obviously, we didn't have our soccer season last year, unfortunately. This past basketball season, she helped our girls' basketball team win the WIA Regional Championship and was named a semifinalist for the Top Shooter Award by Wissports.net. She ended up finishing seventh in the state in our division in three pointers. During my first year as a teacher at Somerset, I also coached middle school girls basketball and I coached the eighth grade team. I remember as we practiced with the seventh graders and Taylor was a seventh grader at the time. And the seventh grade coach, Mr. Solom, had told me, hey, this Paulson kid, man, can she shoot and is she a hard worker? He wasn't wrong. Best of luck to you next year at Winona State. It's been a lot of fun watching you succeed at Somerset. Jack Gastic is Somerset's male scholar athlete this year. Jack has participated in football, basketball, and baseball, and to this point has earned 10 varsity letters through the winter season. He's earned all conference recognition in football this year and is a sophomore in baseball. Jack has been a fun kid to watch succeed over the past four years as he has a strong work ethic, puts his team first, is incredibly humble, and can always be counted on to do the right thing. I can definitely remember my first year in Somerset Middle school principal, Mrs. Eichen at the time, had said, Jack is a tremendous leader, and being around him for the past four years at the high school, that couldn't be more accurate. His leadership and team approach will be missed in our building and on our teams. Best of luck at lacrosse next year, Jack. Well, congratulations, everybody. This has been a, it's been a long ride, I'm sure for everybody else. And what I've learned through my sports is it's important to be selfless. A lot of us have had the sacrifice in this past year. You know, I spent a lot of time with friends that you really couldn't have because you're worried about everybody else. You know, getting COVID and all that, but, oh, sorry, excuse me. <laughs> and I think that's something that will carry on in the rest of our lives. You know, relationships and work, you're going to have to sacrifice, you're going to get up early, you're going to have to work late sometimes, overtime. That's something that's going to carry on throughout the rest of your life. So for me, my role models, I was very lucky. My mom and my dad were very big in my life as a young athlete and as a young student. My dad was a rock throughout my athletics. He was one of my first coaches. He was a tough coach. You know, everybody jokes that the coach's kid has it the easiest, they get whatever position they want, but some of those car coaching and on the ride home was pretty tough. Um, and then my mom, my mom's one of the hardest working people I know. And she, she's, she owns her own business and she still works long nights, long days. When she comes home at 9 p.m., 10 p.m., you couldn't tell that 
she just worked 12 hours because she was the same happy person I always know her as. She's very helpful, almost to a fault sometimes, but I love her and I appreciate my parents so much. Thank you, everybody. Stay safe, stay healthy. Thank you, and with that, I'd like to bring up Mr. Johnson from St. Croix Central for some closing remarks. Public speaking is the uh, number one fear of adults in America. Um, I'm thankful I get to do it tonight, though, because I get to take my mask off. Um, you know, be before I took the, the job here, um, I was a teacher and a coach for 17 years. I taught eighth grade for 10 years and ninth grade for the, for the final seven. Um, and people always ask me, they're like, man, why do you do that to yourself? It's got to be some of the toughest age group of kids to teach. Um, and, and what I would tell them is, is what I'm going to tell you here tonight is, it was so incredibly rewarding. Um, this, this job and seeing you students and parents seeing how you raise your children, um, you should be incredibly proud, all of you, of, of how amazing um, you've turned out. In, in my coaching, we talked often about what success, right? You know, maximizing your potential or winning or all conference or all state. Whatever you kids did and what you did tonight, that's success. You epitomize success. You live success. You breathe success. Um, you again. You should all be incredibly proud of your accomplishments. Um, I want to thank you all for being here. Um, congratulate you again. Best wishes. And athletes, um, know that this isn't the end of something incredible. It's the beginning of something incredible. And you set the table very well for what you're about to accomplish in the rest of your life. So, a round of applause for all of our athletes and families. And thank you.